welcome back to the Keep On Growing channel. My name is Deyanira Cavazos and I am an LPC associate in the state of Texas. I made myself a nice warm cup of tea because it is freezing in Texas today, very, very cold. In today's video, I am going to be sharing with you my completely imperfect grad school journey. And I really wanted to share my grad school experience with you all in hopes of just sharing my story and inspiring others. I personally was reminded last week with someone that I was working with the importance of sharing our stories and letting others know that it's okay to have an imperfect journey. No one's journey when it comes to grad school is perfect at all by any means, but sometimes talking about the struggles is something that we don't like talking about because it's very vulnerable. But at the end of the day, my mission on here with you all in the videos that I share, if you've watched any of my previous videos, is to make the kind of content that I would have wished to watch back when I was in grad school, even before then, to get to know this career field. So be sure to grab your beverage of choice and let's go ahead and get started with this video. Okay everyone, so to give you all a little bit of context and background, before I was starting my grad school journey, I ended up graduating in August of 2015 from my university with a bachelor's in rehabilitation services. So that was a little bit of that background. And then I ended up taking a year off to just help my family, try to find a job, all of the adulting things. And finding a job post-grad when I had my bachelor's degree was the hardest thing. I remember sending out so many applications and getting so many rejections or even not hearing back at times and it was the most disheartening situation ever, which prompted me to then end up working at a school in the front office. So I was a receptionist at a school. I was working there full time, really hated that job, hated the fact that I even had to do that. So during this time when I was working full time at the school, I decided that it was time to go to grad school. And I wish I could tell you that that decision came easy, but I struggled so heavily with imposter syndrome at the time to the point where I almost didn't go to grad school. And I mean, I was just having a complete quarter life crisis, just did not know what I wanted. I felt very confused, scared. I felt like I wasn't going to be good enough if I went into grad school because I didn't have anyone in my family or any of my close friends who did go to grad school who I could talk to about it. I just felt very much isolated and alone in this. And it even got to the point where I just completely gave up on wanting to go to grad school. And I remember actually making an appointment to go to a cosmetology school because I grew up with my mom being a cosmetologist and I said, you know what, I always loved what my mom did. Maybe, you know, grad school is just not for me. Maybe I'm just not meant to be a, a therapist the way that I wanted to be. Maybe I just need to explore other options. And so I gave myself that and I ended up going, booking an appointment with an advisor there and the advisor looked at my information and I kid you not, she looked at me and she said, what are you doing here? And obviously my inner sarcastic voice was like, um, clearly I'm trying to become a cosmetologist. Like, what are you doing here? I remember crying to my mom and dad telling them cosmetology school didn't want me either. So I just felt so lost. And my dad sat down with me and told me, is the only thing stopping you from doing this the fact that you think that you're not good enough. And he asked me what my reasons were. And a big one for me was finances. That was the huge one because I've never wanted to be a financial burden for my parents or just being in debt really scared me just from things I saw growing up so I just I was very afraid at this point there were so many people in my family and just random people that I never asked advice of telling me that I should not go into this career field because it wouldn't pay and it was just a waste of my time so just hearing all of these things at the time when I was in my early 20s, hearing comments like that just killed me inside. I didn't know how to differentiate between hearing a comment and actually taking it on as truth for myself. Anything that anyone just said, I just really let it affect me and affect my confidence and my decision making. And so at that time, what I really needed was that tough love that my dad gave me. And I just knew that even though I was freaking scared and I didn't know if I would be good enough, that I 
would regret it more if I didn't try. So I had to try and I looked up all of the grad school information, which took me a good while. I remember how overwhelmed I felt because I didn't have anyone else to ask about it. So I emailed a lot and I asked a lot of questions and I had to come to terms with the amount of debt that I was going to um, acquire, which could be a video of its own if you all would like. I would be more than glad to tell you how much my grad school degree cost and my undergrad degree was fully paid for by scholarship so i didn't have any debt nothing like that so this was an investment that i was going to make in my career and even though i didn't really have support i decided that this was something that i was going to do for me and so i know this is super long-winded but i feel like it's important to get the context of what i was going through what i was feeling in order to understand the rest of what i'm going to be sharing with you timeline wise so after going back and forth and deciding if i wanted to go through the program of education or through the rehab counseling field which was where i got my bachelor's degree i decided to go straight from my program into the Masters of Clinical Rehabilitation Counseling because a lot of the work that I did in undergrad was going to mirror the work that I was going to do in grad school. So a lot of courses ended up feeling like a refresher. So the program that I went through was through UTRGV, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, and their accredited program is 60 semester credit hours. And so translated, that was 19 courses that I had to take. And once I went through the application process, Process, which is its own thing because I had to reach out to professors from my undergrad to ask for letters of recommendation and, and then I finally got accepted and I remember that was the first milestone the first time where I felt a little bit of a spark I didn't fully feel like I belonged yet but it was a little spark and I said I'm one step closer and that actually became my saying throughout my whole grad school journey where I would just keep telling myself I am one step closer and it was really important for me to celebrate each milestone whether it was small or large because it kept reminding me that I could do this now fast forwarding it is fall 2016 and that is when I started taking two courses so I started grad school by taking two courses because again remember I said at the beginning one of the main reasons why I was hesitant to do grad school and afraid to do it was because of finances so I did end up half to taking a loan because even though I was working what I was making was was definitely not enough to cover my expenses for school and also just my living expenses and as you see later on my financial aid the loans that I received would not cover me during the summer which ended up prolonging my time spent in grad school so my first semester of grad school I decided that I wanted to take one of the hardest professors but this person was also known for being an amazing professor and I remember telling myself I need to take his course because I know if I can get a good grade in this, I can prove to myself that I belong here. And so that was very much a little personal thing. I did not need to do that at all, but it was just, but me at the beginning of my grad school journey was me constantly having to feel like I had to prove to myself that I belonged there because my imposter syndrome voice was just very, very loud at the time. So definitely took a lot of reworking my own self-talk throughout grad school and just surrounding myself with the support system that I needed. So then in spring 2017, 2018, I ended up again taking two courses. Now by this time, I realized that working full-time was just not going to happen. So I ended up letting my workplace know that I needed to work part-time. And so me during this time, I was very stressed, just feeling like I was being pulled in so many different directions. And I felt like my life was just very much out of control because I was trying to balance family and school and work and it all just seemed like so much and so then again fall 2017 semester rolls around and i am still working part-time and just trying to get through my classes and really start to notice that things just become very very difficult for me and so at this time i wanted to quit working at the job where i was currently working and really wanted to try working in the mental health field for the first time and there was this agency that just had the reputation for not being the greatest place to work at and i was so scared everyone again imposter syndrome 
decided to come back up because it always comes up when we're trying new things. So I applied to work there, ended up getting the job, and I just started working there at the time. I also ended up getting married, so I was just going through so many life changes, so I decided to take some time off of grad school. And so I took a little under a year to work in the mental health field, and then I realized that I was just really burnt out. At that point, I experienced burnout in my early 20s, and it was the ugliest situation I've ever gone through, and I've shared this with you all in past videos. So at that time, I decided I got the experience that I needed, that I wanted, I was able to help in my community. It's time for me to leave and to concentrate on grad school. So I don't regret it, but I would never do it again. You guys, you could not pay me enough to do that again. So it was fall 2018 and I returned to grad school and I ended up taking only one course because during this time, I also needed to get another job, right? Because I had to pay my bills. And so I knew that I did not want to work in the mental health field for a little bit. Like I said, I was burnt out and I just needed to find myself again because it felt like I completely lost myself in that work. I didn't have any healthy boundaries. No one really talked to me about the importance of that in our field, which is why I love talking about it on here. It's so important. So I ended up applying and getting a job at vitamin world if you guys have ever heard of that franchise and working there was actually one of the most fun moments it obviously came with drawbacks just like any job but i just felt like i was taking a break from having to be in such toxic environments and could just allow myself to disconnect after work as soon as i clocked out i knew that i could just concentrate on school and even sometimes while I was working there, I would bring my things to study and my manager would just let me study there. He was very supportive. And during this time when I left and started this job, I actually started my YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel. So not this one. Eventually that channel got monetized and that was a way for me to also pay for my school expenses, for my books, for things like that. I'm going to be bringing you guys along in a typical day in my life as a grad student. So for this video, I actually had a lot of different things to get done to prepare for my summer semester, and one of them was to get my books for school. I'm going to be taking you to campus with me, which is actually the first time I've ever really done this, I believe. I don't think I've actually ever filmed around my university campus and I just want to say that usually I get my books online but this book in particular I had to purchase at the bookstore so that is what we're going to be doing today. gone through my semester and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about it. I ended up finishing a bunch of school projects, had a research paper to write, discussions that were on Blackboard, and also what else? I feel like it's a blur. What else did I have to do? So traumatic that I have blocked it out of my memory. I also had to do a filming project so I ended up having to film something for class um, having to do with my addictions counseling class and that was really fun. I feel like YouTube helped me feel way more confident about that but yeah my summer semester has honestly been really great I have an A in my class I don't usually talk about my grades but for the purposes of this video class is going really well this summer semester I got partnered up with some old classmates that I've had in the past so that actually worked out really great I was pretty nervous about that the paper went really awesome and now all I have to do is take my final I'm getting my master's degree and trying to become a licensed counselor so one step closer and I am so excited then summer courses came around I 
didn't have any aid during the summer so I decided during summer too me and my husband decided to pay for me to take a course in the summer because at this time I felt really motivated. I just wanted to finish grad school and continue with that so I ended up taking one course and this part is very sad for me because if I would have had the finances for this as you will see later on um, and, and what I end up sharing on the timeline, I would have finished sooner. And so that's just something that I've had to make peace with when it's come to my imperfect grad school journey because there's just real factors that are out of our hands a lot of times. No matter how hard we work, no matter how hard we try, there's just things that are out of our hands and we can only do our best. Now after this, during fall 2019 and then the spring semester, during these semesters I ended up taking three courses each and eventually I decided that it was time for me to quit the job that I was currently working. Me and my husband talked about it. And so since I was quitting my other job, I ended up continuing my YouTube work during the time. And so that was still some income that was coming in. So technically I continued to work all throughout my grad school career. Career, it just always looked a little bit differently. Hey you guys, good morning. So it is Monday. Today is going to be my first day of classes for the fall semester. I'm really excited. It is currently 11 o'clock right now. I ended up having a pretty late gym session. So I woke up a little while ago and I'm gonna go ahead and have breakfast. We're here on campus, friends. You can tell that the fall semester has begun. There's so many good and positive changes that are going on right now and I feel really, really good about them. One of them being that I'm going to be able to focus full time on grad school. I decided to leave the current job that I have right now. But as soon as I stepped into this new fall semester and I saw the amount of coursework that I was going to have, the professors, the classes, I just needed to focus on grad school, especially because I'm almost done. I'm almost going to be graduating. I have five more classes to go after this and I really wanted to be able to concentrate on it. So let me grab out my little chart here. So summer two, I ended up taking one course and that was in 2020. And one of the main reasons why I ended up quitting that job at Vitamin World that I talked about that I had was because I knew I was going to enter practicum and internship and it was just going to be too much for me at this point. I felt like I was in grad school forever and like I was just crawling to the finish line and as if my mind wasn't already just done by this point i had two more semesters to go but my mind was just shocked and then the pandemic hit spring 2020 and so during this time i was in my practicum working for a private practice for free because practicum students don't get paid and during the end of my practicum is when we ended up finding out about the outbreak. Then I remember all of my professors having to scramble to do classes online. We were all just shocked hearing all of the updates that were happening and started questioning and fearing if we were even going to graduate because we still had one semester to go. So a lot of my friends were thinking, let's push back our courses. And at that time I told myself like, I'm just going to do my best to get this done. I just, I'm going to really mask up and try to be as careful as I can. Um, again, during that time, we, we didn't know to the extent of how bad things were getting, but I do remember canceling meeting with people for projects for that very reason and having to email my professors and let them know like, hey, I don't feel safe doing this. So it was just a mess. <laughs> Not to mention then we entered quarantine time. Do you all remember that period of time where at least here in my city, we had to stay indoors and we could not leave for any purposes for a while. Um, so having that on top of trying to graduate and finish made me feel very much defeated and I felt completely checked out. And I still had internship 
to get through and I was thankfully able to secure my internship site through so many emails that I had to send out and just showing up even though they stopped contacting me after a while and thankfully I was given the opportunity and so my mind as an intern was not prepared for what I was going to see and that was dealing with the aftermath that came with the pandemic and COVID because almost all of the people that were coming in for mental health services in the clinic where I worked were grieving the loss of a family member who ended up dying because of it. And so seeing one after another and constantly seeing the aftermath of what this did to a lot of people where they couldn't even bury their family members because there was no room to do so just and knowing how important that is in our Hispanic culture and our Mexican culture here where I live, it was all so much. And so I definitely practiced during the time setting healthy boundaries at that site, knowing that if something felt like too much, I told myself now's the time to practice saying that you can't do something and saying that you need to take a step back and, and take a break. So that was a really important trial an error period for me also. And so finally, I finished all of the hours that I had to get done. The people that I worked there were amazing. They were so supportive and they helped me out so much. I I finished and oh, I don't know. I don't know how to say this without it just seeming just crazy, but the day that I ended up finishing, I had the worst stomach pain and I didn't understand why and the very next day I ended up being admitted to the hospital where I ended up needing gallbladder surgery and I remember my husband having to help me send an email to my professors to let them know because I was still worried that a certain assignment didn't get in or that I was missing things and that I wouldn't be able to graduate. So just imagine I'm in the hospital and just not okay and also still worrying about grad school and everything that was going on. And I wanna share this because I want to show you all that my grad school experience was not perfect at all. There were times where I had to take necessary breaks. There were times where it was just so hard so many tears were shed so many ugly tears were shed during my grad school experience and i wanted to share my story with you all to let anyone know who's thinking about going into grad school for this career field that you can do this and you don't have to have a perfect grad school journey it is hard work but we can do it we really can if it is what we want. Looking back and thinking of earlier me who was so afraid and didn't want to do this, now I look back and I think, oh my goodness, the things that we would have missed out on now, the things that we're doing now that we would have missed out on, the clients that I see now that I wouldn't have worked with if I wouldn't have gone through this journey. I wouldn't have found what I love to do, genuinely love to do. I love being a therapist. So I graduated December 2020. I did the thing. I crossed the finish line. <laughs> Very messy and imperfectly, but I did it. And I was so proud of myself. And as you all have seen in my previous videos, and if you haven't, definitely check out my previous videos because you get to see the journey that happened after that with the NCE, with getting my first job post-grad. So definitely check out some of my other videos if you are a counselor in training yourself. So that is it for this video, everyone. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions for me, please leave them down in the comment section. I hope this inspired you if you're thinking about grad school. Or I hope some of you just felt represented and felt seen by hearing someone else's imperfect story. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some more grad school related videos coming soon. Bye everyone.